Hi guys, I'm Ernest. Welcome to our channel of Sciences and Mathematics. Today we're going to look at uh, one of the basic uh, concepts in uh, biology and that is uh, basically one of the characteristics of living organisms and that is uh, the process of uh, reproduction. Now I'd like to uh, first thank uh, and encourage uh, our new members. Welcome to the group and uh, kindly ask your colleagues also maybe who, who have an interest in Sciences and Mathematics to just check out in our YouTube channel and uh, find out some of the topics that we have already discussed. Give a feedback on the comment section and uh, give, us, give, give us a thumbs up so that we can be able to be uh, uh, continuing to expand our group and maybe assist one another in different areas in uh, mathematics and sciences. So for today, I felt that it's necessary for us in uh, discussing the concept of uh, reproduction to try and figure out what are some of the ways in which we can be able to describe uh, this process of uh, reproduction. In this case, uh, most of the subject uh, or the topics in biology are correlated. Therefore, it is of essence for us to try and look at uh, other characteristics, maybe in summary of uh, living organisms. So basically, I've given an illustration on the board, which we're going to use uh, in our discussion. So without further ado, thank you and welcome. So as I've said, today we're going to look at a uh, concept in biology. And this is one of the introductory topics and in the broader subject of uh, biology that we're going to look at which is going to give us a prerequisite in studying other areas that are going to follow. So for today, we're going to look at an aspect in biology, and mainly we're going to be biased on the process of uh, reproduction in mammals. And basically, we're going to discuss on the process of reproduction, especially in uh, animals. So in this case, uh, from uh, the basic definition of the concept of biology. Uh, biology basically refers to the scientific study of living things and all the vital processes that deal with the aspects of life. Now from this, we're going to see that uh, living organisms display uh, uh, a range of uh, characteristics that are listed on the left side of the board. And now we are going to begin with uh, the first one that I've listed, which is uh, reproduction. And basically, the process of uh, reproduction entails uh, the production of uh, new offspring from a species. Uh, we're going to look into it in broader details since it's forming our basis for discussion for today. So therefore, apart from uh, living organisms displaying the characteristics or maybe the process of uh, reproduction, they also display uh, this concept of a gaseous exchange, whereby the gaseous exchange is... Uh, a process whereby, or rather it's a physical process by which gases move actively across the, the exchange membrane. We're going to look into that under the topic of gaseous exchange. And then living organisms uh, display the concept of our nutrition, whereby they take in food and convert it into energy and other vital nutrients that are required to support life. Then next we have uh, this concept of excretion, whereby living organisms uh, remove waste and excess water from the body, uh, which of course assists in trying to uh, facilitate the process of our uh, We're going to look at the excretion and homeostasis later. And uh, under this, uh, and also we see that the living organisms also display the concept of uh, respiration, which is a biochemical process by which the cells of an organism obtain energy by combining oxygen, glucose, and uh, this results in the production of carbon-4 oxide, water, and uh, ATP, that's adenosine triphosphate. And then living organisms grow, which basically implies to increase in mass and size of a body or organs. And then lastly, we're going to look uh, at this uh, characteristic that is a uh, movement or locomotion, whereby for the case of our uh, plants, we're going to see that uh, parts of the organisms can be able to chair or to, to move without basically the whole organism changing the, uh, the position in which it is. But for animals, there's this concept of locomotion, whereby this is a change of position from one place to another, maybe in search of mates, foods, etc. So basically, these are some of the characteristics for, of uh, living organisms, and we're going to rely heavily on uh, these basic characteristics as we move ahead in trying to describe various concepts in biology. Now, for our discussion for today, which I've listed on the right side of the board, 
it entails the concept of uh, reproduction, which I've basically said is a uh, reproduction of uh, offsprings from the parents. So in this case, uh, reproduction uh, consists of two basic types, and that is sexual reproduction and asexual reproduction. Sexual reproduction occurs in a, in a sense that organisms uh, combine their genetic information maybe through sexual contact from each parent, and uh, there is a unique uh, offspring that is formed from this process of uh, sexual reproduction. And then next on the right side we have a sexual reproduction, and this is the process by which one parent copies itself to form a genetically identical offspring. And we're going to see this when we're talking about the concept of genetics, especially in the process of replication. And this basically forms the basis for sexual reproduction, I mean, a sexual reproduction. Now, sexual reproduction consists of our two main uh, categories, that is internal, uh, sexual reproduction, internal, and then external. Now, for internal, this is whereby there's uh, uh, the... the, the, the the concept of uh, this particular formation of uh, what we have said as an organism, this entails the combination of uh, genetic materials inside uh, the organism of a female due to interaction between the male and the female gametes that we're going to look into later. Now for external fertilization, this is a display especially for amphibians and fish and the other maybe which we are going to mention whereby the male, the female lays eggs and the male sheds sperms on those eggs and therefore leading to the process of uh, what we call fertilization which ends up in the formation of our uh, offspring. Now we're going to see our different ways in which here uh, this specific process of uh, reproduction of course occurs and, uh, and basically from the concept of uh, reproduction in mammals of course it falls under the category of uh, sexual reproduction since for mammals uh, most of them give birth to their offsprings except, except a few that are egg-laying mammals like the dactyl, blood pulse and the spine anteater uh, which we're going to look at uh, later. Now in this uh, case for sexual reproduction it involves as I've said the, fish, the, 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 the fusion of a male and a female gamete to form a, a zygote and the male and the female gametes that form, they join together through the process of uh, what we call fertilization. Now in this process of a male gamete forming, uh, joining with the female ones, there's a special name that we call these male gametes, and they are called uh, sperms. Now in that sense, for a single one, we call it a sperm, while for the female one, which is a counterpart that they are joining with, is called an ovum. Now the gametes are produced by special organs uh, that we call gonads and the gonads are basically reproductive organs so therefore maybe in this uh, space that I've left down here and just write down so the male and the female gametes are produced by special organs that we call gonads so in this case, uh, gonads basically refers to the reproductive organs and the male gametes are called testes while the, for, for the female gametes uh, it's called an ovary. So basically we're going to uh, look at these specific organs where this uh, process of uh, generation of the male and the female gametes occur. Now this is for the this is for the male and uh, this is for the female so these are the places where by these uh, gametes are produced now we're going to see that the vision of the, uh, the, the, the sperm and the ovum to form a zygote of course uh, they occur in a unique way in that uh, this specific uh, sperm and ovum Have different shapes and characteristics which of course facilitate this process of uh, fertilization. Now the gametes uh, that we have talked about differ in uh, sizes and uh, behavior as we have said and therefore since they are not the same they are referred to as 
heterogametes. Heterogametes. Gametes. gametes huh? Now, in this case, uh, we have we know that the concept of uh, the prefix hetero, in different ways, they, it's used in conjunction with the, the term homo, homo, which basically means the same. So hetero means different. Now, from those different characteristics that I've mentioned, therefore, this specific male and the female gametes differ in structure, behavior, and sizes, therefore giving them the term uh, heterogametes. So therefore, this male and female uh, specific uh, uh, gametes are referred to as heterogametes. These gametes, we're going to use uh, different terms. These gametes are known as haploid. And in the study of genetics, we're going to see that uh, there are different ways in which genetic materials, as we have said that there is an exchange of genetic material for sexual reproduction, Unlike there are sexual ones whereby the parent replicates and produces a similar offspring. In this, there's an exchange of genetic materials which we're going to see whereby the offspring has the combination of uh, materials from the, the, the parent, father and mother, uh, as I can say, or the parent male and female organisms that were involved in that specific pro uh, process of uh, production. Now, the gametes in general have said that they are haploid. Now, haploid from genetics is a term that is used to refer to a cell that contains a single set of uh, chromosomes. Now, normally for human beings, uh, the normal cells consist of 46 uh, chromosomes. But when they are haploid, it means that they contain half the number of chromosomes, now which basically is 23 chromosomes. So basically, when we say that, that the, the, the gametes are haploid, therefore they contain a half or a single set of uh, chromosomes. Now, as I said, the fusion between the male and the female gametes, which is a sperm, the fusion between a sperm and ovum, this is ovum, is referred to as fertilization. And whenever it occurs <coughs> inside an organism, which is basically a female organism, it's referred to as internal and outside external. And basically, I've given an example for those uh, specific to now for the case of a uh, <coughs> fertilization that is occurring at the external for instance the fish that we have talked about the eggs are fertilized outside the body of an organism uh, whereby the female legs eggs and the male in turn fertilizes them by shedding sperms over them and this of course are uh, enhance uh, uh, the concept of fertilization whereby you find that in external fertilization, more number of eggs are laid as compared, or they are present as compared to internal, so that it can be able to facilitate the survival of an organism. So the basic the concept of uh, reproduction is to facilitate survival and continuation of a species. So therefore, for external fertilization, more eggs are laid by the female organism so that it facilitates the higher chances of uh, survival. So this basically is because I, in an environment that consists of fish and amphibians, they, they are prone to bacteria, predators, and unfavorable climatic conditions, which may, of course, lead to maybe some of those eggs uh, getting not fertilized or being eaten up. So this, in this case, of course, sometimes we may find that uh, these particular organisms for fish and amphibians, they swallow their eggs uh, for protection and to provide a warmth or a warm condition for them to hatch. So in this case, uh, as well, additionally, you'll find that these eggs for the external fertilization are laid with a, a strand of jelly-like substance that one, as I've said, prof provide a protection from the environment uh, and avoid disturbance. So that jelly-like structure is going to hold the eggs together and uh, ensure that the disturbance is minimized. And sometimes this egg acts as a repellent for for, for, for predators and then therefore uh, allowing them to mature or undergo uh, that process of uh, development to produce uh, a new species. And therefore, <coughs> we're going to see also that uh, the concept of uh, internal fertilization that occurs inside the body provides an uh, uh, maybe an ample environment for the development of the photos 
or maybe the zygote that was formed into the fortus and basically into an organism that is going to form and become mature. So from this, uh, of course, uh, there are other <clears throat> aspects that we basically have to check on. Now, I've talked about the concept of a haploid, and we are going to have another term that we are going to use in conjunction with that one that, refer, that is referred to as uh, diploid. And basically, this refers to cells that con con contain, uh, of course, a... Uh, two sets of uh, chromosomes. Now suppose for the haploid, which we said they contain uh, 23 chromosomes and this basically it refers to N, N integer N, and therefore for diploid it's going to be 2N, which basically is 46. So therefore the term diploid refers to cells that contain a set of, uh, maybe two sets of uh, chromosomes. And basically these are the normal, uh, normal body cells which are different from the gonads that we have already uh, talked about. Now, in appreciating this uh, process of fertilization that we have already discussed, or maybe mentioned uh, using this illustration, the process is very essential in our, our living organisms, basically mammals that we have already mentioned, because it's going to facilitate, I'm going to go away with this. So the process of fertilization, in an essence, is going to facilitate continuity of our species. So basically, reproduction assists in continuation of our species. And number two, it's going to allow <coughs> the, the, the creation of a variant or variations in genetic composition. species and as we said for sexual reproduction there is a concept of a exchange of genetic materials and therefore this plays into the concept of a, a genetic recombination and therefore therefore improving the species that is going to uh, to, to be given as an offspring and lastly we're going to see that it increases an ecosystem whereby these species are going to be necessary, maybe in tra trying to facilitate the continuation of a cycle. Maybe if we say that uh, there's uh, one organism that is moving, missing in the ecosystem, then there's going to be an imbalance. And therefore, the presence of a species uh, from the process of reproduction ensures that uh, the other cycles or ecosystems run on smoothly. Now from this, I hope that uh, this is going to give us a prerequisite in trying to discuss the concept of uh, fertilization and uh, maybe eventually the male and the female reproductive organs. Now this is going to assist us to understand when we talk about the concept of uh, sexual reproduction, internal fertilization, and sexual and other uh, processes that we have mentioned. Uh, they are going to assist us in trying to lay a basis for discussion of other topics in biology. So I hope that uh, this is going to assist us, of course, uh, in trying to figure out how we can be able to interpret information related to genetics. And I encourage us to uh, subscribe to our channel so that we can be uh, having an update of our other areas that we already discussed in our content. So in this case, I'd like us to go to the uh, description box, check out on our, on our list that we have a playlist that we have uh, given us a link and try to see other videos that we have done. Give our feedback, a thumbs up, and encourage us so that we can be able to continue assisting one another in this uh, specific concepts we are discussing in science and mathematics. So that is it for today, guys. By God bless. You.